Hey everybody, so this is just a quick tutorial um, to force uh, AMD Crossfire to engage uh, when playing Rust. Um, I know some people have been having issues uh, getting it to engage. Uh, in my case, it would fire up uh, for the menu, but once the game started to load, it wouldn't uh, stay engaged. Um, for some people, for some reason, it works flawlessly, but that's Crossfire, and we're probably all used to that. It's just a very finicky uh, system. In any case, uh, so the first thing you want to do, at least these are all the steps that work for me finally to get it going. Uh, in Steam, in your library, go to Rust, uh, right click Properties, Set Launch Options, which will be under the General tab. Uh, you want to have uh, inputted here um, hyphen window, hyphen mode, space, exclusive. And then just hit OK to save that. That's all you need to do in Steam. Um, then we want to get over to um, C, Program Files, um, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and we look for Rust. And so for the two uh, executables that start with Rust, so Rust Client, um, Oh, well, keep in mind, I'm doing this on a Windows 7 setup. Um, it should be very similar for Windows 10. Um, and I believe what we're doing right now, Windows 10, you'll actually have more options than I have here. But the idea is the same. So right-click properties, uh, compatibility tab. Um, for the client, everything else is grayed out for me. All I basically want for the client is to run this program as an administrator. So check that off, save that. Um, the rest executable. I get if this is where I think in Windows 10 you'll have a lot more options than me. So disable visual things, blah blah blah. Basically, it's shutting off uh, anything, um, all the little uh, little extras for the Windows desktop. It just makes it look better. Um, they're good uh, settings, especially like when I'm streaming Netflix or YouTube or whatever. But uh, for playing games, you want it off because. Like for Windows 7, the arrow theme, when it's running, it's like VSync is engaged all the time. And we definitely want VSync off to get that FPS as high as it's going to go. So by checking these off, when I run the game, it will uh, disable that for me. And same thing, run this program as an administrator. Click OK. Now, I don't know exactly if you can do the same thing in Windows 10 uh, in Windows 7 for other games. Um, if you don't want to get to all that, um, it's also handy to turn off the Windows arrow. Very easy to do. So just right click, personalize, uh, and then see my arrow theme right now is selected. I would usually go and select a basic uh, theme like Windows 7 Basic, Windows Classic, whatever. I won't click on it now because um, when I load up my Radeon settings window, OBS Studio, uh, for some reason, won't record that unless I'm running it in Arrow theme. But uh, yeah, I would just click on this, and and that's it. And then you can go back after you're done gaming. So for the Radeon settings, um, here's also another thing that I had issues with. I think some people do, some people don't. It's up to you. I think the most up-to-date drivers now they're running that adrenaline, um, those adrenaline drivers. I went back and uh, installed um, uh, the Crimson uh, series of drivers, 16.1.1 um, release, and I am not updating that. It just seems to be the most stable for me. And for most of the games that I want Crossfire to work with, it's been working flawlessly, so I'm happy with that. Uh, obviously, you can't get it off the AMD site anymore. I got my copy off of Guru 3D. Um, but again, you, tr you can try, like the setup, all this looks the same with Adrenaline, so I leave it up to you guys, you play around with it. Um, I'm just here to show you the settings that I picked for Rust. So you want to go as minimal as possible to get the FPS up. I guess it depends which cards you're running, but since I'm only running um, the AMD HD 770 cards, they're not the best cards. So I'm trying to keep all my settings down to a minimum. Uh, Anti-aliasing, use application settings, uh, method, multi-sampling, morphological off, anisotropic, uh, use application. Now for texture filtering quality, um, it differs again between different people's setups. Um, performance should be the fastest, but 
there have been people that have stated that standard or even high worked better than performance. So um, test that out. But in my case, I leave it on performance. Uh, you definitely don't need surface uh, format optimization. So uh, vertical refresh, definitely off, always off. OpenGL off. Shader cache is good. Um, you can put it on AMD optimized or on. Uh, I think the AMD optimized works better if you're running an SSD, which I am not. So if you're not running an SSD and just running it off a standard hard drive, leave it off because it's just going to slow things down. Uh, tessellation mode, AMD optimized. Uh, frame pacing off, uh, frame rate, target control disabled because that's all like VSync. You want all that off. Now for crossfire mode, um, as default mode in my case would not engage, so I had to run it either on AFR friendly or optimize one, one by one. Um, I find the textures are much smoother for me in, in the one by one. Like the, the FPS was slightly smoother and I had less micro stuttering and AFR friendly. However, being on uh, mountains uh, where there's snow and rust or um, in the desert where the rocks kind of get pretty white, uh, there would be quite a bit of flickering. It just gets annoying after a while. It doesn't affect the game at all. And if you're, uh, you play with it. I guess this is going to be different for everybody. I just play low pop servers with smaller maps. So it's nice to have the smoother FPS, but I'm not getting into that many fights. So, you know, optimize one by one just looks, the game looks better for me, but uh, play, play with the two, see which one works better for you. Um, and that's it for the Radeon settings. Um, so we covered Steam, we covered that, uh, the Radeon settings, the executable. So now the final thing that made the big difference uh, for me was um, making um, a batch file. So, because uh, the game triggers itself into a window mode, uh, borderless, and we want to force it into full screen. So um, very easy to make a batch file, um, right click new, uh, you're basically just making a basic text document. Um, the difference is uh, when you rename it, uh, get rid of the TXT and put in BAT. You want to change it, yes. And that just becomes a batch file, uh, old school stuff from the days of DOS. Um, to open it, uh, just don't double click it because it'll run it like an executable, but you want to right click and edit and then it just opens up in notepad like anything else. So here's my batch file for Rust. Um, so that's the command to force it into full screen and then it'll just start the game by running my... Steam has to be running of course uh, and this will run the game using the Steam ID. Uh, all this, I'm going to put this in the description. Um, and all this should be uh, the same for everybody. Um, just in case, like this path, I don't see why it would differ in your case, but just to be sure, if, and you, if you want to be sure, so basically, I think in Windows 10, you would be using Cortana for this, whichever you got to do to find the regedit program, which lets you get into your uh, registry. And so you just want, so in my case, uh, HK uh, current user, and then we want to go under software, find Facepunch Studios, LTD, and Rust. So that's my path. And that's the, that's the item that we are uh, forcing into a uh, full screen mode. Um, so just double check that. But again, it, it, it don't it, try it first. Just copy it from my description and paste and it should work if it doesn't then try uh, checking that out same with the steam id i don't see why the game id would be different for anybody else in case it would be for you um, the nice thing with the radeon it'll tell you the steam id of the game i'm sure you can check it in steam too i just find it's easier here when i go to rust profile properties and there's the steam id right there and that is it oh the last thing when you're going to run Rust. Um, so let's see, I fire up my batch file and click yes. Right there, it switched over to um, the Windows Basic because I was in the arrow. Although this should still be recording since I don't have to show you the AMD uh, settings page anymore. 
Now, because uh, with the window mode exclusive and the Rust command and um, the um, command we put into the batch file, what happens for me, and maybe it won't happen to you, um, but if you want to get it to run into uh, 1080p, um, the configuration window that pops up for me always resets back to windowed mode checked and in my case uh, 1680 by 1050 so i just uncheck it and go to 1920 by 1080 um, in my case I was, i'm running this game in fast uh, quality where i used to run it in potato and with the single card i was getting um, I'm going to show you a couple of videos, uh, but they're not exact because with a single card, my MOBO will run at 16 speed as opposed to 8 speed. But I was lucky to hit 40 FPS, you know, and most busy areas like launch site and, you know, getting into battles, uh, I was dropping to 30 FPS in potato mode. So that's one grade lower. Now I'm running in fast and you'll see in my video uh, the difference. So I really hope this uh, helps everybody out um, so they can get used to that crossfire while they still got it. And I think it should also work for NVIDIA users for SLI to get it to trigger. I think the idea is pretty similar, but I don't have any NVIDIA cards uh, to connect, at least not two of them. So um, this is mainly a tutorial for Windows 7 and the crossfire. Good luck, everybody. So... This is my FPS count at the train yard monument. So you can see I'm, I'm not even hitting 30 FPS. It's a little bit better when you turn away from something like the monument, but still bobbing around 30 FPS. Now I do have the one card running at eight speed since I do have a crossfire setup that just didn't engage for this boot up, but uh, even running the single card without um, uh, without the second card being in the second slot, so which means it gives me 16 speed on my motherboard. Uh, it's still getting just over 30 FPS in this game. Uh, these are on uh, fast uh, graphics settings. Okay, sorry for the strange video. I gotta record this off my phone because OBS Studio uh, eats up too much performance when you uh, try to capture a crossfire mode. So here we are at the same monument. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it top left. So just walking around looking at it, I'm getting uh, pretty steady, 60 FPS, a little bit over. Uh, V-Sync is off. Um, I am running an old 60 hertz monitor, so that doesn't help in areas like this. Uh, when you're looking away from the monument, uh, I start climbing above 70 FPS. So the increase with Crossfire is pretty extraordinary. Uh, it definitely helps an old PC like mine to keep up in a game like this.